everybody. How are you? I just hopped off a plane from Florida and I am here now with you live. I'm going to go live on the radio in a few minutes. I'm going to talk a little bit about my conference that I just came from and uh, we'll just see where it goes. Totally not prepared today, uh, but I'm just going to do it on the fly. Usually I do a lot of prep, but um, we're just going to make it happen today. So uh, thank you for listening or joining me. And uh, we're gonna get this party started in a few moments. 60 seconds. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. 30 seconds. 30? Yeah, 30. Well, that's a big difference there, Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sooner than I thought? We got this. I guess I keep stuck, getting stuck in this like thing in the floor. What? We keep getting stuck in this thing in the floor. God's sakes. There's like a missing tile. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hopefully we find it. We gotta work on that. Hello and welcome to Friday. Uh, this is Denise Nostrom, the financial chick, and today's kind of an interesting day. I literally, about an hour, maybe a little bit over an hour ago, just landed here at MacArthur Airport uh, from Florida. I was in Florida since last Saturday, and uh, I'm a little sad to be back, I'm not going to lie, and, and it really has everything to do with the weather, because as soon as I, I walked off the plane, I felt the cold. And then I, I came out here to see, you know, get my luggage, and uh, it's pretty overcast and this sad weather that we've had pretty much all winter. So hopefully it is spring, and we're we're, we're uh, roaring towards summer. So hopefully this will change. But um, yeah, I had a great uh, great couple of days. Uh, got out of the office a little bit, but uh, we're still working. Didn't stop the working. Um, flew out last Saturday to go down and meet some clients uh, in Florida. And incidentally, what's interesting is uh, pretty much every one of them uh, were former New York residents, some as recent as last year, last uh, September, uh, and some that had moved down there you know, a couple of years ago. So uh, it was good. You know, the weather was great. Uh, and then after seeing my clients, I went to a conference. But yeah, so I, I, I flew into Tampa and got my rental car and my first client I went to was on the west coast in Seminole, Florida and, uh, and incidentally she was actually a, a woman uh, that or a girl that I met in college so her and her mom moved down from New York and I uh, was able to get to see her and they just sold a house up here in New York and uh, so we had some definite things to, to talk about there and then uh, the next day I moved on to Apollo Beach which is also on the west coast of Florida uh, yet another um, another New Yorker that uh, bought a house I don't know probably like four or five years ago uh, they've been down there and uh, from Nassau County so got to, to visit them and uh, well, let me, let me go back to the Seminole. So it was very interesting. So whenever we, we leave the state, I don't know if many of you were like this, but uh, I, don't know, I love Waffle House. And I know waffles are not really good for you, you know, but you, when, when you're traveling, you have to have, you got to go to Waffle House. So I, I have my Waffle House and I have my hash browns and um, it's great, you know, so that was, that was a definitely a, a fun thing to do. So, and of course, spending time with my, my 
good friend and her mom was was very very special so you know my clients although not all of them start as friends a lot of them become friends but it's kind of neat to work with friends and uh, and really uh, do a thing so wait that we're getting uh, some word from the uh, the sound room here uh, the cheesy hash browns no I didn't get the cheesy hash browns I, I got the one smothered though with the onions yeah yeah <laughs> probably too much information but hey I'm sure most of you can relate you know it's nothing like the Waffle House uh, so then the next day um, again just I, I love what I do I love my clients uh, we, we were in Ho Hollow Beach and, and this client has a, a boat a boat right outside of their house like right in the back yard and they just on the lift they put it in the water and uh, we got a ride we got to see the sunset we went to uh, a restaurant on the water and then on the way back he said um, I want to relax so Denise you're gonna drive the boat so it's it's quite amazing it's a beautiful boat and it's a big boat and it was happened to be pitch black it was totally dark so he um, had me drive the boat and kept flashing the flashlight and I was a little bit concerned, so it's really amazing that not only do they trust me with their money, but they trust me with their boat, which, which is amazing. We have a boat, so I, I kind of had an idea how to, how to drive it. Uh, but then we get back to the house, and, and then they also have a Tesla, the Tesla X series, and the wife said, did you ever uh, drive a Tesla? And I never even actually been in a Tesla, believe it or not. Uh, but as of last Saturday, last Sunday, I now have not only been in a Tesla, but I drove a Tesla X series, which is worth one hundred and forty-five thousand dollars. So, uh, but of course, we were at it was in the evening, and it was um, around their neighborhood, and I was a bit nervous because um, you know I never drove the Tesla, and it is a little bit different than uh, the regular cars. So, uh, but again, my clients are awesome and it's a great experience. So then from there, I stayed with them and then I flew over to the, the East Coast and uh, met up with a client from Fort Lauderdale. Now she's been in Fort Lauderdale for many, many years, but she was originally a New Yorker many, many years ago. Um, and then from there, I went to Delray Beach to see my next client. And uh, yes, former New Yorker, former teacher uh, on Long Island. And uh, we, we had met and uh, she just had some surgery on her shoulder. Uh, but I hear she's doing better, so that's good. So we had a wonderful meeting. And uh, then from there, I finally ended off uh, at my conference. So every year with my, my broker-dealer, which of course is the company that I do my business with, my company is Diversified Financial Solutions, but I work through what's called a broker-dealer. And they're like the big companies, you know, the companies that you hear, you know, the Smith, well, not Smith Barney, but Morgan Stanley's or, or, or the bigger companies. But being independent, we have a broker-dealer and they're called Peak Brokerage Services. And what they do, we all get together, uh, financial advisors all over the country, and we meet up um, in a pretty nice place in Jupiter, Florida, at the Jupiter Beach Club. And uh, we have a, a two and a half, well, I guess, what's it, there's a, like, yeah, the, the two and a half day conference. And from there, we have portfolio managers that come in. We have different speakers uh, get updates on economic, uh, what's going on in the economy, uh, what's going on in investing. It's a great thing and it's something I love to do. I mean, I'm always learning. I always want to know what's going on, uh, the cutting edge of what's happening. And what's really nice about the organization I'm affiliated with is the fact that I have portfolio managers at my avail whenever I need to speak to them. So when my clients do investments, if they have a particular question, usually you can't talk to somebody at Fidelity or Schwab or whatever the case may be, but we have portfolio managers that you can talk to. And one of the gentlemen uh, that uh, I spent a lot of time over, over the, the two and a half days just picking his brain because I could and he was, he was there, uh, was uh, Paul Meeks. And he's been on the show. If you've been a long time listener, he has been on the show several times. Uh, he's a CFA, Certified Financial Analyst. He's a portfolio manager and he uh, teaches at the Citadel. And he's a constant, um, he was just on this week, uh, he was on CNBC, they go to him when different things are happening in the marketing marketplace, he's on there to give his expert opinion and guidance to, uh, to the public. So it's really amazing, um, I, come, I'm, I always come back very charged up and ready to go and, and uh, you know, uh, we have all this information that I want to share and that I want to uh, institute in my practice to help uh, all of you out there. Because uh, again, it's a crazy time. Things are, are a little bit crazy, but um, it's not, uh, you know, they always say this time it's different. A lot of times it's really, it's not different. It's just a matter of the way we navigate it. And just like driving that boat, which was kind of scary, uh, you know, we had the light, you know, we, we had darkness, right? But then he would shine the, the, the flashlight to make sure I was still uh, not going to hit anything out there in the water. And uh, 
that's pretty much what it's like with investing. You know, sometimes you, you, you've got a, a, a portfolio together, you have a few things, you, you have your goals and everything's ready to go and well, then what happens? Life changes, things change. Uh, one big change that we're all feeling is inflation. So things that you put together right now, you know, you may want to shine the, the, the flashlight on it and take a look at what's going on and if it's still working for you and if it's something that's going to get you to where you need to be or just if you're concerned. I mean, you know, I, I was talking to one of my colleagues earlier and, and all the stuff that we hear on the media, you know, whether you're looking at, listening to Fox News, CNBC, MSNBC, it's scary. You know, it, it, it's really scary, but I, I use the example that... Uh, I, I don't mind flying. I just told you I just came back from, from uh, Florida, and I've probably flown six times since last summer, you know, with different conferences and stuff like that. And I equate it to what the media does. So a f family member, I'll let them, let them, I won't give their name, but, uh, you know, always says, oh, my God, you know, I can't believe that you like flying. I said, you know, I, I really, you know, I've been fortunate. I, I haven't had any delays. I haven't had any cancellations in all the flights that I've had over the past year or so. And they just said I was lucky. But when you think about it, you know, the, the news is only going to report on like those 200 flights that are having problems that are canceled or delayed or, or people didn't show up for work or whatever the case may be. The other 4,800, I don't know, let's say there's 5,000 flights in, in, in the country every day. I don't even know if that's close. But those other 400, 4,800 flights, no problem. They started the destination, ended off in their final destination. And that's pretty much what happened. I mean, I, I had no problem going to Tampa last Saturday, got in. I was very fortunate I had the direct flights, but flew to Tampa, no issues. We were a little bit delayed coming back, but we got here on time. So this, it's the same type of thing. You know, we, we can't focus on the negative. We have to focus on the positive. But you are listening to the Financial Chick Show, and I am here to help you kind of dissect the craziness of financial and take out the anxiety of uh saving for the future and not running out of money in retirement. So stay tuned and we have more after the break. And I just want to thank you for being with me today. Stay tuned. everybody doing totally ill prepared today just kind of winging it but sometimes that works out uh, just got back from a trip I've been gone since Saturday visiting I visited five clients and I had my conference and uh, now I'm back to this uh, gray and dreary weather here what is going on so uh, but I'm looking forward to the weekend and being home and seeing my family And that's my story. So we're just a commercial break. 30 seconds. Okay. So David, I'm looking at you. I don't even know if it's going to be a nice weekend here or not. Is it? I don't even know. No. And we're back. This is Denise Nostrom, the Financial Chick. You're listening to the Financial Chick Show. And uh, today we're just uh, kind of shooting, shooting the breeze. I uh, was away since last Saturday. I had uh, went down to Florida to visit some clients, and I had my annual conference uh, at the Jupiter Beach Club. And it's always a great time to get together. I mean, as a financial planner, it's my goal to uh, continue learning to help all of you. And uh, this conference does just that. You know, I'm, I'm really blessed to be with the, uh, a company or affiliated with a company that uh, there's a lot of support. The owners of, of the uh, broker dealer are all owned by advisors just like myself. So when they uh, 
are working with, you know, when, when they make decisions in the company, it's not like the government that makes decisions for all of us and they don't really know, you know, what, uh, what it is that we do. They're just kind of like throwing down the laws from the top and, and just, you know, seeing what sticks. But they really, they're in the trenches just like myself. So they're here to support, you know, when, when, when they bring in uh, leaders or different uh like speakers that are coming into the conference, they know which things is going to help us to help all of our clients, to help all of you. So, one of the things that we uh, we did talk about was, um, you know, of course, the economy. That was a big thing. We had uh, portfolio managers that were there. Uh, like I mentioned before, there was Paul Meeks, who's uh, constantly on CNBC with his uh, with his advice and stuff. So, you know, they're saying that there's. Um, Basically, the market's fighting the Fed right now. Uh, you know, we, we, this week we've had another, well, it's, it's been every week, it seems like, where the market volatility is really, really crazy. But uh, this week, the biggest concern right now is whether the Fed's going to increase interest rates, which they're most likely going to do uh, in, in about a week or so. And, you know, we're, we're still uncertain as to what they're going to do in terms of how many more times. Uh, but the market... It, it, in spite of itself, is doing well even with the interest rate increases. So they're looking to get to maybe five and a half or six percent on the Fed funds target rate. Excuse me. Right now we are at five percent, and um, you know one of the things that's uh, in the brokerage world it says when interest rates are high, stocks die. When interest rates are low, stocks grow. But again, that's what we say was happened before, or this, you know, this is a problem. We're not really seeing that. As a matter of fact, we have seen a market uh, year to date that has done very, very well. I mean, we were coming off a terrible year last year, but has done really well this year. So, you know, basically, we just have to stick with what we need to know. And, you know, inflation still running around 5%. I mean, that's one of the things I'm, I'm seeing with a lot of people that, uh, you know, they're needing to take money out. I think we talked a little bit about this last week. And we just have to really buckle down and look at ways that we can save money. And on the other side, what's happening is a lot of people are retracting and, again, moving away from the investments that are going to exceed inflation. And one of the things that we never want to do is run out of money, especially in retirement. And But at the same time, we want to make sure we protect our money. So one of, that was probably one of the biggest topics or the main themes at the conference that we had was protection and in income guarantees. And right now, there are people that have pensions and there are people that don't have pensions. And, and the people that have pensions, they do have a bit of a, you know, a, a, more of an opportunity because they don't have to depend on their investments to fund their entire monthly expenses or their monthly income. They can say, well, let's just say if somebody has 5,000, they have a pension of 2,000, they only have to hit the pension for 3,000. But on the other side, if someone has $5,000 of expenses and they don't have any core income, well, then you don't have that, that, that protection. So one of the things that people are looking at is uh, something that will give you that opportunity to invest, but you're not in the market. So you're, you're getting the upside potential, but none of the downside loss. And so you're participating in indexes, but what's also giving the opportunity at some point in time to turn on the spigot and to give you a guaranteed income stream. So a lot of people are looking that way. We're a little bit nervous for the market. You can also look at something where you can still have that, that, that money uh, flow, but be in the market, something that you can still have investments in mutual funds or bond mutual funds, stock mutual funds, or what's called sub-accounts, and really give yourself that, that sense of security. We know the market's crazy. It's always going to be crazy. You know, we have times of, uh, of feast and we have times of famine, right? And, but it's really looking at your portfolio and, and, and solidifying. Now, some people have a lot of money at the bank right now. And we know the banks, well, we know one reason we don't want to do it. We don't have anything in excess of 250000 But even if you're looking at, uh, you know, 30000 and, you know, everything's getting 0.5%. Because if you do notice, if you get your, your monthly statement for the bank accounts, they really haven't raised those rates. So even something um, that's been very popular as part of your overall portfolio is looking at something like a fixed annuities. Now, fixed annuities 
are basically, I call them CDs on steroids. So most people are familiar with the CD, you put your money in, you get a rate of return, and you know you, you hold it for a period of time, whether it be a year, or three years, five years, whatever the case may be. A fixed annuity, now this is only if it's more of a long-term long money, a fixed annuity will give you a supersized value rate, so depending on how much you're going in with, um, or how long you want to hold that for, we're looking at anywhere between 4% uh, percent to 4.75%. So this is something that you can you want to look at your overall portfolio and increase the overall rate of return on your entire portfolio. So that's one uh, theme that we're looking at. Looking at your debt assets, a lot of people have old fixed annuities, and and if you haven't pulled them out of their out of the file cabinet, uh, I just switch. I'm, I'm just in the process right now of switching somebody that had a 2.2 percent uh, fixed annuity, which about a year to a year and a half ago that looked pretty sweet, but now it doesn't look so good. You could almost double that. So it's really looking at everything and, and, and how can we elevate? So we know things are tough, but let's take advantage of the things that aren't tough. So interest rates are there, so don't fight it. Don't fight the Fed, right? Look to improve your portfolio. The other thing I talked about was called a fixed index annuity. The fixed index annuity is something that maybe take a portion of your retirement assets that you say, listen, I don't want to lose any more money in this. I want to take this and put this into something that I have that upside potential, not the full upside potential. And what I mean by that is it's, it, it, it's capped. So if the market does 20%, you may be capped at like five, but if the market goes down 20%, you lose nothing. So I'm not saying this for your whole portfolio because we still have inflation, right? So we, we, we want to make sure we, we balance out our assets across the board, but we have the fixed index annuity. We also have a variable annuity. Now the variable annuity can be that same thing. We can create a portfolio for you that will grow and that will also give you income guaranteed for life. So as we're in these places of uncertainty, which certainly we are right now, what we can do is look to certain things that can that we can count on. It's good to count on things, right? We, there's a lot of things we can't count on, but the, believe it or not, there are some things in the investment world, in my world, that you can count on and really just be able to sleep at night and to know that you're not going to run out of money. And I had, I was, I had, was very fortunate that I do I'm big uh, with financial plans, and I was able to present at my conference. Uh, the, my financial planning program to everybody and to show them how I can show all of you uh, or answer that question, you know, am I going to run out of money and give you a track to run on and, and, and be able to make this decisions that we all have to make and we sometimes we make it by shooting in the dark but wouldn't it be better to not shoot in the dark and make those decisions based on facts and figures? Again, it takes a little bit of work up front to do it but if you go through the process and you have a, a, a plan that you can look at and we tweak that plan every couple of years, who's better than you, right? So I'm happy to be back. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, this, this uh, annual conference always gives me the, uh, the needed boost that I, that, that I uh, or the boost that I really need, I should say, at this point. And we're going into summer here um, and, and things are good. You know, you can't complain. So uh, I want to thank you all for listening. You're listening to The Financial Chick Show. I'm The Financial Chick. You can reach me at financialchickshow.com or at 631 758-8691. That's 631 758-8691. Give a call to my office, call for a complimentary consultation, and uh, visit my website to see what we're all about. So I just hope that everybody has a great weekend. Like I said, I just got back. I don't even know if it's going to be nice here this weekend. I do know it's not nice right now, um, but uh, hopefully we warm it up and uh, we can do some boating here on Long Island. Again, thank you so much for listening. Enjoy the weekend and be with me next Friday. All right. Thank you so much for being here, and um, I will uh, see everybody soon. And uh, I gotta go home and see my kid, my husband, and my puppy dog. All right. Have a great weekend. Bye.